Take your digital scrapbook pages or products to a new level with the use of clipping masks. Hi, this is Karen Schultz with Karen Schultz Designs, and today we're going to look at how to use clipping masks in Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. So what are clipping masks and where do you find them? Well, simply defined, a clipping mask is a shape which will define the edges and transparency of an item to which it is clipped. Shapes are available on both Photoshop and Photoshop Elements under the custom shape tool. And this is a shape that I've used using this custom shape tool. You can also purchase shapes typically called masks in digital scrapbook stores. And this is a mask that is included in one of my products called Window Masks. So once you have a clipping mask, what do you do with it? Here is a clipping mask from again Windows Masks. So you want to make sure that you open that in Photoshop Elements or Photoshop. If you're in Elements, make sure you're in the expert mode. And then you need to place what you want to clip to this mask on a layer above the mask. And I want to use this photo to clip to this mask. So I'm going to grab this photo, grab the Move tool, grab this photo and bring it up to the mask and bring it down. And now it is on a layer in my layers panel, but I need it right on the layer above the mask. So if I left click on it, I can just drag it down and drop it in place. Now that is right above the mask. When I left click on the image on the document itself, I need to move it over to reposition it. Now you can see the mask is just a little bit larger than the photo. So you can either enlarge the photo just a little bit or decrease the size of the mask. I'm going to decrease the size of the mask just a little. To do that, I will click on the mask to make it active, hold down Control T or Command T on the Mac to bring up the transform tool, and then hold down the Alt key to restrain the pro proportions, and then just make it a little bit smaller and click on the check mark to commit that change. And now you don't see any of the mask behind that. So we know that the photo was going to take cover up the whole mask. So now we need to click on the photo to make it the active layer, hold down the Alt key and hover the mouse in between the two layers. You see the down pointing arrow and the little white square. We know that that is telling us I'm going to Adobe's going to tell us that I'm going to clip that photo to that layer below once you left click on your mouse and I'll do that right now and let go of the alt key and then you see that the photo has taken the shape of the mask. Obviously this is cutting off their heads and we don't want to do that. So when we're on the photo layer all we need to do is click on it and drag it into position wherever we want it. So we can move this anywhere we want. I think that looks good. And that's all there is to it. You can tell that this photo is clipped because uh, for several reasons, you can see it in the uh, document. You can also see that it's indented in the layers panel. And then you also see this little down pointing arrow with the little white square here. And that's another indication that this photo is clipped to this mask. So that's really honestly how easy it is. And you can get beautiful layouts from using masks with those uneven, grungy, fun edges. This is a layout created using my kit um, Life Captured and the window masks. Now I did say that the window uh, panes were not on the mask that we used when we were experimenting and that was just so that they weren't distracting to you. But this layout was created by one of my creative team members, Glory, and it, I just love the simplicity of it. It's just so very classic. So I hope that this has helped you understand clipping masks. If you want to make sure that you receive all of my Photoshop tips and tricks, be sure to click in the comment section below this video and you'll be able to sign up or register to receive my weekly newsletter. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.